best family 4x4 four four for under 20 grand. We've assembled 10 strong contenders, and first up in our whittling down process is some point scoring. We'll be marking them in four different categories, awarding a maximum of five points in each. Only the highest scoring four cars will go through. First, it's space. And it's maximum points to the Suzuki. Not only is it big in there, but your money also buys you seven seats. The Kia and the Hyundai are nearly as big inside. The Jeep is surprisingly spacious and the Nissan isn't far behind. So it's four points to each of them. The Toyota, the Honda, the Mitsubishi and the Land Rover are all medium sized. So space is OK for passengers, but you'll find that wardrobe a bit of a squash. Three points apiece to them. And the lowest score, just two points, goes to the Subaru. It's more of an estate car with four wheel drive than a true off roader. The rear seats are cramped and it's not got the biggest of boots. Next, safety, and the Honda, Hyundai, Jeep, Kia, Nissan and Toyota all get a decent four stars in Euro NCAP, so it's maximum points. The Mitsubishi and the Subaru haven't been tested by Euro NCAP, but they do well in American crash tests, so it's maximum points to them too. But Land Rover's Freelander only gets a mediocre three NCAP stars, so it's just three points here. Likewise, the Suzuki Gran Vitara. But what about performance? Well, none of these cars are electrifying, but there are significant differences between them. It may not have a V6, but the Nissan is the only one to break the 10-second 0 to 60 barrier, so we're giving it four points. While there's a whole huddle of cars that make it between 10 and 12 seconds, so it's three points to each of them. But there are two cars that are definitely left behind. The hefty Jeep manages 13.9 seconds, so it's two points here. And the real heavyweight of our selection, complete with its separate chassis, is the Kia. We can't afford a petrol version, and this diesel takes a yawning 14 and a half seconds to get to 60. So it's just one point here. For our final round of points, we're looking at reliability. And a quick look at some of the surveys reveals some clear leaders. Toyotas, Hondas and Hyundais seem to top the reliability lists, so it's five points to them. Nissan, Subarus and Suzuki's are good, but they can't quite match the impeccable behaviour of our leaders, so it's four points to them. Mitsubishi's fair somewhere in the middle, as do Kia's and Jeep's, so three points. But Land Rover still struggle to keep their cars together, and surveys rate them poorly for reliability. We know Land Rover are working hard on quality, but we have to be circumspect. Two points. So the final table shows it's the Nissan and Hyundai, followed by the Honda and the Toyota, that go through to our next driving round after the break. One of them will be our champion and be up for grabs in our latest fifth gear competition. You can get ahead of the game and enter now by answering this simple question. What symbol is often used for four-wheel drive? Is it A, 4 plus 4, B, 4 minus 4, or C, 4 by 4? Call this number if you want to enter, or this one if you prefer to text us, using the word gear along with A, B or C. And we'll repeat this lot at the end of the show. Lines close at midday on Monday, May the 24th, and you can also enter via our website. Welcome back to our test to find the best family 4x4 four four for under £20,000. We rated our original 10 cars for space, safety, performance and likely reliability and we've narrowed them down to just four leading contenders. Now, on fifth gear, we've highlighted in the past that 4x4s with a higher centre of gravity can be more likely to roll over. So, how sure-footed will our top quartet feel when I take to the test track and Vicky heads out for the open roads? Toyota's RAV4 has always been one of the best 4x4s to drive, and this is no exception. It's nimble and it behaves more like a GTI than some GTIs I could mention. There's very little body roll when cornering, the steering is neat and precise, and the whole thing soaks up lumps and bumps very well. There is a, a fair bit of unness that you feel the back picking up underneath you, but. You never feel insecure, you never feel like you're about to be in any trouble. Also surprised at how little lock is needed around this little tight circuit. 
And that little two-litre engine pulls really well. Not quite a GTI. A lot of fun. So, how will the Nissan fare? Compared to the nimble Rev4, this X-Trail feels like a bus to drive. However, the engine is surprisingly athletic once you give it its head. Body roll is kept to a reasonable minimum around the corners, but the steering is slow and cumbersome, and it weights up a lot when you're trying to park. It's definitely got more understeer straight away than the little neat and tidy RAV4. But, and here's the difference, with the Nissan, I can flick this little switch, and I'm now in four-wheel drive. Got more traction, and it's actually handling more neutrally. But again, no real worry about rolling. These smaller off roaders certainly feel much more car like. Pretty impressive. Next up, it's the Honda. Computer game fans will love the design of this handbrake. It's exactly like a joystick. The two litre engine is responsive and willing, as is the chassis, but the front tyres could do with a bit more grip when cornering hard. Straight away, we're not nearly as happy as we were in either the Toyota or the Nissan. Huge amount of traction problems. Now, the Honda, of course, doesn't have all those four wheel drive tweaks. It's mainly a front wheel drive car with power going to the rear end only when the front starts spinning. Jetson Button may be able to get on pole, but I don't think this Honda will. And finally, the Hyundai. If big and rugged is your idea of an off-roader, then the Santa Fe will fit your bill. The steering wheel is huge and it's also got a pretty poor turning circle, which means low-speed manoeuvres will take a bit of time. The V6 engine isn't the silkiest on the market and it only comes coupled to an automatic gearbox, though there is a semi-automatic mode for the enthusiastic driver. What a shame we haven't got a manual. Because I think this Hyundai might be giving the others a run for their money if it had. What I really need is to get first gear so the lusty V6 can punch us out. The only problem is that it's got a 15 horsepower, even more than the Nissan. It weighs an extra 200 kilos, and you can feel that weight under braking and in the body rolling cornering. A spirited attempt, but it's the most cumbersome of our four on road and track, and the first to go. So we've reduced the field to just three. And we'd happily recommend any of these as excellent buys. But only two can go through to the final round, so we have to say goodbye to... The Honda. When push comes to shove, it just isn't quite on the pace. So the final showdown is between the Nissan X-Trail... ..and the Toyota RAV4. Join us in a moment to find out the winner. <laughs> Welcome back to our 4x4 test. We've narrowed down 10 of the best 4x4s for under 20 grand to just two, the Toyota RAV4 and Nissan's X-Trail. For the final test, we've gone off-road. Driving in the dirt, this Nissan gives me a lot of confidence. It makes mincemeat of the nice, dry surface, and when it comes to the stickier mud, it seems to be very minimal. Do you know what? I think it's so good that it can even get up wet. Now, keep going, lovely. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. And over the top, yoo-hoo! Woo-hoo! <laughs> Well done. I'm not so sure about taking our little GTI off-road, but it's a 4x4. Wherever Vicky's gone, I've got to go as well. It certainly seems quite capable along these bumpy forest tracks. There's no real clever differentials in this, but it is permanent four-wheel drive. 50-50 split, so it should get most places. But can the Rav follow the X-Trail up the hill? Oh, dear. Oh.
for stuff. So the Toyota may be nimbler on the road, but it can't match the off-road abilities of the Nissan. Nor can it quite beat the X-Trail's speed and space and the versatility of its four-wheel drive system. So, all things considered, the Nissan X-Trail is the best family 4x4. And now